Tilt the forks back all the way. Hey, you got the forks back all the way? Back all the okay. Way. Get up. couldn't get it started. Uh, you're probably right. That's yeah. before we discovered starting fluid. <laughs> no, actually you had discovered okay. starting fluid. It didn't, didn't work either. Oh, it was that cold. This is a 1.65 inch Hotchkiss mountain gun. Serial number 60, an early one. One of the early purchases by the U.S. Army. Could have been at Wounded Knee. We're not sure which ones were there yet. Further research. But this is number 60, made in 1881, and the Battle of Wounded Knee wasn't until 1890. I think that's the year. But anyway, here's the uh, here's the mark. It's in excellent condition. Uh, we show you the bore, too. The bore is like new. Good and open her up, yeah. Okay. Now, let's see if we can see anything down the floor. Okay, we'll get a light here too. Yeah, okay, that's great. May have a little uh, lint in there, but other than that, it's an excellent bore. Okay, thank you. And these are fun to shoot. The ammunition's easy to make. Let's see, where some ammunition goes with it. Let's show them the ammunition switch. Uh, there's a rear sight that goes on it that's been packed already. Let's see, here's the Hotchkiss tag on the carriage. The carriage is actually made a little earlier in 1878. Here are the uh, reloadable cartridges that are indestructible. They're made out of solid steel, and they take a number 209 shotgun primer, and uh, we've been using about a one to two pound lead bullet. I think we've been using one pounder, but anyway, works fine. You can use these. These have fired dozens of rounds each, and they can uh, be reloaded indefinitely. Made out of steel. Thick walls. Yeah. Thank you, Butch. Appreciate it. This will be at the James D. Julia auction in Fairfield, Maine in March of 2015. Now here's a picture showing one of them at Wounded Knee. We can't quite see the serial number on it, but uh, otherwise it uh, looks identical. And here are the soldiers of the uh, unit that fired it. Here's an original ammunition box. These are very hard to find. There's one of them at the auction. I don't know whether to go with the gun or go separately. 
maybe in a separate lot. But anyway, the ammo boxes are very hard to find. <clears throat> so, one more look at the picture. Great. Now let's show them the original uh, ramrod and let's put it on the carriage, Butch. We got the original ramrod here too, not ramrod, I'm sorry, cleaning rod. Uh, the bristles have been uh, bristled off as you can see, but uh, this is an original one and we're going to fit it right onto the carriage where it belongs, come to think of it. Why don't we go ahead and do that? It goes on that side I think, doesn't it? There you go, that's the original place where it goes. Okay, we loaded the Hotchkiss cannon. Now next we're loading a uh, pristine condition flank defense howitzer, 24 pounder. This one was made by Alger in 1863 and it doesn't have hardly a scratch on it. Okay, now we're bringing up the uh, experimental Moffat gun from 18, 1870. The barrel forging was made in England and it was made for uh, Robert Moffat who made a pair of them, as I stated in another video showing this piece. And uh, it's a breech loader that takes a uh, metallic cartridge case. So we made up a, a reproduction cartridge case that you can use to fire it and you can make up more because as I stated the other day in the other video uh, the cartridge case uh, we made from a 90 millimeter US uh, Army cartridge case. Uh, you want to play the cartridge? Yeah, let's go look at the cartridge case. And it's steel and it was kind of a uh, brown, I won't use any epithets on what shade of brown but uh, we, uh, we painted it gold so now it's brass, right? <laughs> anyway, that's our cartridge case. It fits perfectly. In the other video, we show you how to load it and eject it. Thank you, Tom. Oh, that's it. Oh, we, we have to measure the rim of that. Would you mind measuring the rim thickness? Wait a second. Uh, you want to measure it? Measure it in uh, inches, yeah. Okay. And we'll take it down in the video so I can't forget. Yeah, uh, right. You have to turn it to where you can. Okay. See. Right there. 2.87 millimeters. Okay, now put it in inches and let's see what that is. Inch millimeter, change it there. Okay, 0 0.111 inches for the rim thickness, and we had to know what the headspace is because we're going to make another cartridge case for the other Moffat gun, and I think they use about the same headspace. Thank you. All right. One sign's enough. Okay. Yeah. So into the truck goes the Moffat gun, experimental Moffat breech loader. I think it weighs about a thousand pounds. It was made to go on a uh, Dahlgren heavy boat howitzer carriage. It's a 12 pounder breech loading cannon. And that's the operating lever sticking out behind it, that rat tail looking thing. See the rat tail, that's the operating lever. Uh, next we have a uh, six-pounder 
made at Springfield, Massachusetts by uh, James Beers, B-Y-E-R-S, in uh, 1796. It weighs uh, about 650 pounds. It's a light six pounder that was in use at the time. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well, but uh, here you go. You see it was on a uh, split trail carriage and there's the uh, through hole for the stirrup that uh, held the elevation assembly. We get more pictures of this we can, uh, we can put up. Still pictures, but uh, these are the only videos you're going to see of it, I'm afraid. It's already packed. Yep. Want to watch that? Make sure it hits the pallet somewhere. Yep. Come on in. If it will, if it doesn't, that's fine. That's it. Perfect. Okay, we'll look inside now. See, everything's all packed up. The uh, bars are. What do you call those bars? What? The bars. Load the, bars. Those load bars. Is that what they are? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Load bars are in, and. Uh, the whole thing is uh, ready to go to Fairfield, Maine for the big auction in uh, March of uh, 2015. So there you go.